Let's go over the details for this example. Five candidates are running for club president. We're calling those candidates A, B, C, D, and E. And what I want to do is look at who the winner of the election will be with each of five voting methods. We're going to start with plurality. Plurality is just about looking at first choice votes. So we're only going to look at first choice votes. Let me highlight those here. So we're only looking at those. So we're going to slowly look at each candidate in turn. If I look at A, A only has one vote as we look across. If I look at B, B has several um, places where they have votes, uh, three people, four people, and two more. So that would be nine altogether. Uh, C um, has four people who voted for them. D has six, and finally E had two votes. How plurality works is it's whoever has the most votes, and B has the most votes, so B wins with plurality. All right, next let's look at the runoff methods. We'll start with top two runoff. Now both runoff methods require that you know what the initial first choice votes were. And we have that from plurality, so that's convenient. Uh, with top two runoff, we're going to take the two candidates who had the most votes in for first choice. And so that would be uh, B, who had the most votes, and then D, who had the second most votes. So we're going to use those two candidates, and we're going to look at how they would do if you redistribute everyone else's vote. All right, so redistributing other people's votes. First off, A. So A's vote, one vote came from here. And if A's vote gets redistributed, it would initially go to E, but E is out of the race. So then it goes D, and D is still in the race, so A's vote would go to D. So one vote from A would go to D. Now let's look at, um, say, E's votes. E's votes came from this column. Uh, e had two votes, and those two votes for E, the first off, they would go to A, but A's out of the race. They would then go to C, but C's out of the race. Um, so then they go to D, and D is still in the race, so those two votes go to D. And then let's take a look at the remaining candidate who has been eliminated, and that would be C. C's votes came in the second column of uh, other preference schedule. And so if we look at C's votes, C would initially, their votes would transfer to A, A's not in the race, so then their votes transfer to D. So it turns out all of the candidates that were eliminated in this example, all of their votes went to D. So if we do a new total, B still has nine votes, but D now has nine plus three, 13. And one way to check to make sure you've gotten everything is add those total votes together. 9 plus 13 is 22 votes, and if we look at the beginning, we had 22 people voting at the beginning, uh, so we have all of the votes, so that means we now see that D has a majority, so D wins top two. So, so far we have one uh, B winning for the plurality, D winning for top two. Now let's look at the other type of runoff, which is instant runoff. Now instant runoff, you eliminate candidates one at a time in terms of the, the candidates with the least votes. I'm going to erase my markings up here to make it a little clearer what we're going to be doing. Um, so the candidate with the or the candidate that had the least votes to begin with, so go back up to where we were looking at them initially, um, up at the plurality votes, the first choice votes. Um, the candidate with the least votes was A, so that's still the case here. So if we look at A's votes, A's votes came from this first column, and A's votes, if A is out of the race, would go to E. So A's votes go to E, and now E is still in the race because initially with instant runoff, we just simply take out one candidate. So B was still had there with nine votes, C still had four, D still had six, and E still had two. 
when we redistribute A's votes and they go to E, then E now has three votes. We now look to see if anyone has a majority. Well, there's 22 votes to, altogether in this in this race, and um, no one has more than half of that. So we have to continue to eliminate. So one difference between instant runoff and top two is that we can have multiple uh, vote tallies as we one by one eliminate candidates. So the next candidate to get eliminated is going to be E. So E is gone. So if E is gone, then we have to redistribute both of the votes that went to E. Now E had two um, category um, groups that were voting for him or her. E had uh, two votes from the column where E was ranked first, but E also had that one vote that they got from A. So we need to distribute both of those. So let's re-examine the vote distribution. Now B still has nine, C still has four, D had six, but now we're going to take that two and that one vote and redistribute. Well, starting with the two votes that E had, if we redistribute, that goes to A initially, but A's out of the race, so then they would go to C. So C gets two of the votes that E had. Now the other vote that E had originally came from A, so if A is out of the race and E is out of the race, then, then that single vote goes to D. So D gets one more vote. So you have to be careful about where, looking at exactly what those, where those preference votes came from and who would be the next in line. So even though E had three votes in the last uh, uh, round, um, two of those votes go to C and one goes to D. Uh, when we do the tallies here, B still has nine, C now has six, D has seven. And at this point, um, we still don't have anybody with a majority, so we go one more uh, we, we want to eliminate one more candidate. This time the elimination is going to be C, so we need to look at redistributing C's votes. C had four votes and they also had two votes. So we're going to look at those votes from C. Um, let's look at where the four votes went first. Um, before I do that, let me remind you that we had B still has nine votes. So B has nine votes and D had seven. If we look at where C's four votes up here went, if C is gone, they would go to A, but A is gone, so they go to D. So C's four votes go to D, so D now has uh, 11, but then let's look at the two votes that C got from, um, from E. So if we go back to where C's votes were from E, these two votes would now go to D. So D gets two votes. And so now when we look at a, a new total, D has 13 votes. So it ends up giving us the same um, result as top two, but that's not always the case when you eliminate um, candidates one at a time. But in this example, um, we do get the same result from both runoffs. So with plurality, B wins, with top two, D wins, and with instant runoff, D wins.